When did Germany exactly surrender towards the end of World War II in Europe? Was it May 8th or May 9th as they celebrate in Eastern Europe these days? Well, did you know that the first German unconditional surrender occurred here on May 4th, 1945, but it was a partial surrender. Here on the Timulo Berg, on the Lüneberg Heath, the German general von Friedeberg partially, unconditionally surrendered to British Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery. But why was this surrender only partial and what did it mean? That's what you're going to learn in this video where you're going to learn about the forgotten German surrender of the Lüneberg Heath. Keep watching. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, my name is Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history. Preferably, I do that on locations like right now. And if you find it interesting, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. If you want to support me additionally, you can do so via Patreon or via PayPal. The links are in the description. The main Western Allied attack against Germany was launched in March 1945. The Allies already got a foothold in Germany in October 44 when capturing Aachen. In order to reach the Ruhr Dams, the Americans had to cross through the Hürtgen Forest. From September to December, the Allies fought a grueling battle in this area and did not prevail. In February, the Allies attacked once more and that month the Ruhr Dam was taken. The Rhineland Offensive was a series of Allied offensive operations by the 21st Army Group commanded by Bernard Montgomery from February till March 1945. Once the Allies crossed the Rhine, there were no natural barriers. They captured city after city. Also, the German armies across the river consisted of 60 divisions on paper, but in reality they proved just half as strong. Many Wehrmacht soldiers surrendered as soon as the Allies appeared. SS units fought on more fanatical, but they were hindered by the lack of supplies. As the Allies advanced through Germany, something happened way up north at the city of Flensburg. There, the Flensburg government was established. Hitler had committed suicide on the 30th of April. Officially, Goebbels succeeded him, but he killed himself shortly after. In his last will, Hitler had appointed a successor, Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz. Dönitz had proven loyal. The new government went to the north of Germany to a small city named Flensburg near the Danish border. The city had it been bombed by the Allies and seemed therefore an ideal location for... Well, for what actually? By the time Dönitz took over, the military situation was simply terrible. Berlin had fallen. Germany was split in half by the Soviets and the Western Allies. Early May, Dönitz laid out his goals. The only policy was to try to negotiate a series of partial surrenders in the West while continuing the fight in the East, at least until as many Germans as possible soldiers and civilians could be rescued from the clutches of the Soviets. On the 3rd of May, Field Marshal Montgomery wrote to his son, I really think the German war is drawing to a close. We have taken 1 million prisoners in April and the total since D-Day is now 3 million. Now that Hitler is dead, I think we can expect large-scale surrenders on all sides. At 8 in the morning on that day, a German delegation led by General Admiral von Friedenburg crossed the British lines and were escorted to the Villa Müllering southeast of Hamburg. Von Friedenburg was a representative of General Keitel, head of the army, and Admiral Dönitz, now head of state, and wished to surrender. The delegation was brought to the Lüneberg Heath, where Montgomery had his HQ. When the delegation arrived, Montgomery made them wait in the open under a British flag that had been set up there. Then, Montgomery appeared from his caravan. He said, Who are you? I've never heard of you. What do you want? Von Friedenburg replied, I'm here to negotiate. Montgomery said, it's unconditional surrender and nothing. Von Friedenburg read a letter from Keitel offering to surrender all German troops in the north, including those who had been fighting the Red Army. Montgomery said the latter should surrender to the Soviets. Surrender to the so-called Russian savages was unthinkable, according to Von Friedenburg. 
Montgomery replied that the Germans should have thought of all these things before they began the war and before they invaded the USSR in June 1941. Montgomery said he would only accept the unconditional surrender of all German forces in the Netherlands, all of northwest Germany, including the Frisian Islands and Heligoland, together with Schleswig-Holstein and Denmark. Friedeburg replied and once again brought up the refugee problem. Montgomery said he was no monster, but refused to discuss the matter. The Germans had to surrender unconditionally. If you refuse, I shall go on with the battle. The distraught Friedeburg got permission to return to Dönitz with Montgomery's stipulations. Admiral von Friedeburg and Major Friedel were allowed to return to Dönitz's headquarters in Flensburg. They returned the following day. In the evening, the German delegate signed the instrument of surrender. It would come into effect the next day. Assembled here today to accept the surrender terms uh, which have been made with a delegation from the German army. And Major Fried will sign last. Now I will sign the instrument on behalf of the Supreme Allied Commander, uh, General Eisenhower. On May 7, 1945, the German High Command, in person of General Alfred Jodl, signed the unconditional surrender of all German forces east and west at Reims, in northeastern France. On May 8th, the definitive surrender was signed in Berlin. The actual signing was delayed until after midnight on May 9th, Central European time. Till the end of the war, the northwest of Germany, Ostfriesland and Schleswig-Holstein, weren't taken by the Allies. This Nazi rump government, under the leadership of Karl Dönitz, functioned till May 23rd. On that day, the Allies arrested the leaders of the last Nazi government and with that the Third Reich came to its definitive end. The last Germans that would surrender however did so in September that year, a few days after the Japanese surrendered. These Germans were stationed on the Norwegian island of Svalbard. That's the story for another time. If you want to know about the rump government of the Third Reich, click right here. And if you would like to learn about the last territories that were under German control until the German unconditional surrender came around, you can click right here. I want to thank you for watching and best wishes from Lüneberg Heath in Germany.